If someone involved in the IS-7 incident was his chess opponent... Nightly, huh? Then that must mean... Then that must... Then that man must be the mastermind behind this case! No, he's dead. But he's dead! I was about to say, we're looking for the guy in the red hoodie, but if it's... That's why I was like, it can't be Nightly, because Nightly's dead! You mean the red raincoat? The red raincoat, yes. But he's dead, so that can't be the person that was in the red raincoat that attacked Kay! What if Nightly was had a body double? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, the only other person would be um, Gustavia's son. Yeah. They were both taken to the same orphanage. Even Shelly the Killer admitted not to being the mastermind. Exactly. He's like, nah, it's not me, fam. Huh. Well, you know what? Okay, now we know what we've got now. Because he said he wrote them in Braille. But, or wrote, hand wrote them yeah. in Braille. But this was typed on a word processor. That's the le that's the leap that we needed to get to yeah. this point. I'm certain you said you wrote your letters in Braille. Correct. The good prosecutor must know that I'm lacking in sight, do you not? Is he not actually blind? The correspondence chess letter we found had been typed out using a word processor. What? That cannot be. What do you mean? So someone went out of their way to retype the letters on a computer? Could another person have acted as a middleman between Dogen and Knightley? What do you mean? Dogen wrote his letters in Braille, however. Oh. By the time it reached Knightley, it had been rewritten on a word processor. We must assume that some middleman rewrote those letters. And the reverse can also be said! That somebody might have taken the letters Knightley wrote and re-delivered re them to Dogen. Yes, that is indeed true. So that so there is a middleman in there. So that There's actually a braille could, translator. <laughs> so yeah, they could change it to where he was cor Huh. Yeah, because that could have still make sense that he was corresponding technically with the middleman who could have been Gustavia's son. But then if Knightley was gone, then it would have to stop in the first place still. So he could still have been technically communicating with Gustavia's son. Mm hmm. Hmm. Knightley and Dogen both communicated through a certain individual. Dogen, were the letters that reached you? They were in Braille, of course. So Knightley Boy's letters must have been transposed by that same person as well. Oh? Then that somebody must be... the mastermind behind the case. He's like, hold up. <laughs> You're saying there's someone else who's the mastermind behind this case? Then who the hell is it? Calm down. Dover's son, Knightley, is already deceased. In that case, there is one more youth that we should consider to be the mastermind. Yep. You mean Dane Gustavia's son? But who the heck is he? No one knows. If Knightley is Dover's son, then Gustavia's son must be... Do I know anyone that's, like, 24 <laughs> here? I'm gonna go through the list. You're 27. I mean, there could be an age gap in there. You're about right. Gumshoe, ain't it? <laughs> um, Sebastian. It's not Sebastian. <laughs> <laughs> well, um... No. He's in the right age bracket. It can't be him, no. Will Powers! <laughs> <laughs> Horace Knightley was 24. The only other person that's 24 is Simon. And Simon was his best friend! That's right! It's Simon! Yes, it's oh Simon! Oh my god! <laughs> oh, we're the only friends either of us had since childhood! I forgot he fucking existed! I never Same. even- I never even thought to think about Simon this whole time. Oh they were god. friends since childhood, so if Knightley was that, then that would have to be the case. He was the same as me, and he wears a red hood! <laughs> He, Simon wears a fucking red hood. Where is Simon? He wears, well, it's, it's, a, orange. it's orange, but it's dark at night. Orange no, equals red. No, red raincoat. Red raincoat. He was the same as me. We never had real families. It can't be. Could it? Could it really be him? Mr. Edgeworth, what is it? You've gone all pale. <laughs> I've figured it out. The identity of the mastermind who's been controlling this case from the shadows. What? Who in the world is it? I don't want to believe it myself, but it is someone we know quite well. The mastermind is... 
<laughs> oh my god, I, I can't I, believe it. I, I can't believe it's it. It's the monkey. <laughs> it's the monkey. <laughs> Controlling him. <laughs> <laughs> he can't do it on his own. The monkey does it's it. It's the monkey. The mastermind behind this case. An apprentice uh. beast tamer. <laughs> He's no amateur. Oh my god. What a fucking face. Jeez. It's the monkey. Yeah. <laughs> For the beast he has tamed is none other than this entire case. Simon Keys. He's the mastermind behind this whole incident. Like you had no idea I'm so smart. Oh my god. <laughs> Who would have thought he had us fooled? <sighs> Especially with that voice you gave him. Well, apparently Shaggy's the the, the, <laughs> the Shaggy's the Einstein of this game. He's using 1% of his power. <laughs> yeah. Ah, oh, Mr. Edgeworth! <laughs> Are you guys here for the show? He is dressed up. Wow. Funny. <laughs> Mr. Keys, Miss Barry. Oh, God. You're a little early. I'm sorry, but we're still getting ready. But I'm so happy you came. You remembered our promise. Mm. It's like, yeah. Yeah, I remembered you asked us to come and see the show when you gave me this. I'm so happy you came. Please enjoy yourselves. I'm sure my performance will surprise you, Mr. Edgeworth. Your performance has already surprised me, Mr. Keys. Oh. Um, but he hasn't performed yet. Regina? <laughs> please have a look at this photo. I'm surprised I'm like, Regina, I need you to leave quickly. Yeah. <laughs> we have business. Is this balloon the property of the Berry Big Circus? Ah, oh, it, it is. Did you see it flying around somewhere? It's highly likely that this balloon was used by the culprit in the case we are investigating. Huh? Who is in charge of the balloon? Well, that, that would be S Simon, but... Uh, are you saying? Mr. Keys? You flew this balloon to the middle of the fl of the You flew this balloon <laughs> in the middle of the night. Did you not? I do occasionally practice alone at night. I'm not much of a pilot, though. I'm a little clumsy. Sure. <laughs> So for practice, you'll do something as challenging as flying a balloon at night. Wouldn't that be rather difficult for someone who is clumsy and not much of a pilot? Then what do you think I was doing, Mr. Edgeworth? You brought Kay to the roof of the Grand Tower. In order to frame her for the murder of Jill Crane. Not a single security camera recorded Kay using the elevator. Therefore, the only way she could have gotten up there was through flight. The only one who could have flown her up there was you, Mr. Keys. Hey, no way! Mr. Edgeworth, how can you say that? That's not all. You drugged John at the garbage pickup and kidnapped him. Wasn't that why you were late when you came to watch the trial of Patricia Rowland? Oh. No way! I have no idea what you're saying! There's no way I could do things like that! Please believe me! Mr. Edgeworth, please! I wanted to believe you. However, you have broken that trust yourself. That's horrible! Why would you say that? Didn't you want to say that you would trust me? That you'd believe in me? Don't you worry about that. We're your allies. That's because we're like birds of a feather, right Mr. Edgeworth? Birds of a feather, huh? I suppose that's true. We have sufficient information about your past. I doubt you had a motive to kill Knightley. Rather, you are probably the most affected by his death. And I doubt someone as timid as you could work up the courage to murder someone. <laughs> Alright, I'll get you out of here. We'll believe in you. I'm so sad. Those words were all lies. It, it wasn't a lie. We really did trust you. Okay, even you. You said we were like birds of a feather and yet... I'm hurt, Kay! You hurt me deeply! Uh, I... Oh... Hey, Mr. Edgeworth, maybe Simon isn't a bad guy after all. I see. So that's how you operate. I understand now, all too well. No matter who you face, you find an emotional weakness and exploit it. You guide each person towards the outcome you desire without them even noticing it. That is how you're able to mastermind the entire case. 
I may have fallen for your tricks before, but not this time. Ooh. Simon Keys, I indict you. Hmm. So what's come to this after all? You were always so full of confidence, Mr. Edgeworth. But I rather like that. Because now, I can rip that confidence to shreds. Oh god. Uh... uh... Oh my. I was wondering what his transformation would look like. Oh dear. Oh my god. Totally different. Um, um, um. Huh. Wow. <laughs> Good work, everyone. That does not fit anymore. <laughs> uh, you sound like you sound like Sebastian now. <laughs> Man, I don't know what to do for him. I can't give him a shaggy voice anymore. Christ. You could you his person you could <sighs> that could have been an act. That could have been him like, I'm all alone in the world. But now I don't know what voice to give him. <laughs> The mastermind behind the case. You're saying that there's someone else who's the mastermind behind this case. Then who the hell is it? Dover's son, Knightley, is already deceased. In that case, there's only one more youth that we should consider to be a mastermind. You mean Dane Gustavia's son. But who the heck is he? If Knightley is Dover's son, then Gustavia's son must be... Well, we're the only friends either of us had since... Child. He was the same as me. Are you shitting me right now? Really? It can't be! Could it? Could it really be him? Mr. Edgeworth, what is it? You've gone all pale! figured it out. The identity of the mastermind who's been controlling this case from the shadows! What?! Who in the world is it?! I don't want to believe it myself, but it is someone we know quite well. The mastermind is... IS... Pharaoh, damn it, tell us who it is! You'll find out next time. But I think you all know who it is. And I really didn't see it coming, but something told me that I... Someone tells me I probably should have, but uh. Well then! Last time we left off, we were actually speaking with Dogen, and he was actually telling us what really happened uh, that night 12 years ago, and how he actually had an acolyte with him, and you know, helped him out and helped him escape, and. But he also said he met him first time 18 years ago. And apparently. He was always, always corresponding with Knightley, which was actually Isaac Dover's son. So then we say, then, it must be Dane Gustavi's son, who, who's a real mastermind, which I've been kind of feeling had a huge inclination toward that, you know, for a while now. But the only person that makes sense is none other than somebody that I wasn't expecting, but also somebody that kind of just showed up in the middle of this case. It's none other than... Where the hell is he? Simon! Wait a minute. Yeah, Simon! Oh boy! What? Who had who thunk it? An apprentice beast tamer? <laughs> He's no amateur. How? How did I even see this coming? Damn it, game! It did it again! For the beast he has tamed is none other than his this entire case. Simon Keys! He is the master behind this whole uh, incident. Holy crap. Simon Keys. This game just gets better and better, and it's way too early for me to stop, so I'm gonna continue on, but holy crap, guys. I don't know what else to say, but hmm. I mean, to say you, you may not to say you should expect it, but at the same time, it's like I don't know. It's a damn good twist, though. I'm not gonna lie. Let's just save and continue on. We gotta stop Simon. But we gotta. To me, to me, what comes to mind is like, why? Why do all this? If anything, I don't, I don't know, man. I mean, it can't be anyone else, right? 
I'm so sad. Those words were all lies. It wasn't a lie. We really did trust you. Kay, even you? You said we were like birds of a feather, and yet... I'm hurt, Kay. You've hurt me deeply. I... Oh... Hey, Mr. Edgeworth, maybe Simon isn't a bad guy after all. No, I think he's still using us. I see. So that's how you operate. I understand now. All too well. No matter who you face, you find an emotional weakness and exploit it. You guide each person towards the outcome you desire without them even noticing it. That is how you were able to mastermind this entire case. I may have fallen for your tricks before, but not this time. Simon Keys, I indict you. Indict you, I mean. Hmm. So it's come to this after all. Oh my god. You were, you were always so full of confidence, Mr. Edgeworth. But I rather like that. Because now, I can rip that confidence to shreds. He's kind of creepy now. What the hell? Oh boy. Really? Really? Huh. Good work, everyone. The mastermind behind the case. You're saying there's someone else who's the mastermind behind this case? And who the hell is it? Dover's son, Knightley, is already deceased. In that case, there is one more youth that we should consider to be the mastermind. You mean... you mean... Dang Gustavia's son? But who the heck is he? If Knightley is Dover's son, then Gustavia's son must be... <gasps> oh my god! <laughs> I waited 93 of videos for this. Or how it is not! Uh, or 94, whatever. I swear to God, this is not! <laughs> uh -huh. I had no idea! He's such a. Oh! <laughs> Sorry, I'm gonna be so pissed uh, if this is true. Uh, well, we're the only friends either of us have had since childhood. My god, you're doing the voice, it is! Oh! He was the same as me. We never had real families. Oh my It can't be. Could it? Could it really be him? Mr. Edgeworth, what is it? You've gone all pale. I figured it out. The identity of the mastermind who has been controlling this case from the shadows. What? Who in the world is it? I don't want to believe it myself, but it's someone we know quite well. The mastermind is. Oh no! <laughs> I. Oh. <laughs> oh. Game! Game! This is great. God, I'm hangry, so this does not help. Uh, by the way, ding! <laughs> ding! Ding! Where's the marker? Ding! Oh! Why didn't I put the... D oh! Oh, man. Are you... effing... kidding me? <laughs> oh my god. I thought they were gonna say no oh It's freaking Yeah, 18 years ago. Oh my god, he would have been what, nine? Six. Six. Oh, I can't count. Oh yeah, six plus eight is fourteen. <laughs> 
Oh my god. Oh, okay, I'm gonna present. <sighs> Who is it, Danny? Who is the master behind all this? It's Simon freaking Keys. Oh my god, it didn't go away. <laughs> oh! I mean, it did go away. That means, oh! I need some water. Hold on. <laughs> I thought he was so sweet and nice. Well, oh my god. I'm done with this game. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm not, I don't want to play anymore. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> I don't trust nobody no more. I don't any new character that comes up in the new Ace Terry series. I don't trust them anymore. I, just, I don't. I'm done. But isn't that great though? I mean, this entire time, this entire time, you would never have thought that. Never. Ev no. Everybody kind of like faded away into their own existence or you know their roles or whatever. But holy cr Simon, like. Uh, uh, <laughs> why? Why all the why all this 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 mess? Ugh. Because it calls for a great game. God. This game got me jacked up from the flow up. Ugh. I need I need a drink of water. <laughs> I was gonna say if you want a drink, it's only two, so I don't know. <laughs> oh no no. Oh. All right, so, oh god! In the next episode, we're going to uh, go after Simon. Yeah. So, uh, thank you guys so very much for watching. And if no one's told you that they love you today, we do. Have a great day, everybody. Bye. Freaking Simon. Last episode, oh, oh, freaking A. <laughs> and that's all you guys need to know. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, Peter Skinny, please put the what counter up, please. Uh, ding! ding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't. Uh. I feel so betrayed. I feel so betrayed. If this is true, I'm going to, oh, my God. So... Side, you know what? We'll just let's just go into it. Just press yes. Go. Oh my god. I. If you've seen the last video, you know why I'm freaking out. <laughs> oh my god. And I'm just sitting here, smile on my face, and laughing. Oh yeah, it's great. Let me, let me drink my mango tea. You drink that. I'm gonna drink my water because that's all I can have. <laughs> yeah. Oh this well. This is actually from Taco Bell. It's really good. Mmm. I think I had a, um, a small sip of that when my sister or someone got it not too long ago. It actually is pretty damn good. Yeah, it's refreshing. I'm like, oh. Because everything else from Taco Bell gets you going to the bathroom. Oh god. <laughs> well, you, you know, it, it's a it's a well it's a known thing. Apparently, a lot of people talk about it. I don't know if people actually you know use the bathroom after Taco Bell. I just feel like it's just a saying nowadays, but. Just eat, eat real Mexican food, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Alright, we're here at the very big circus. <clears throat> we walk in. Lada and Nicole need to get out of here. I don't know why they're still here. <laughs> they, they just want to, you know, see the, you know, how things are going to turn out. Uh, uh, whatever, okay. Oh. <clears throat> ah, Mr. Edgeworth! <clears throat> oh, God. Are you guys here for the show? Mr. Keys, Miss Bear. Oh God, he's in makeup. <laughs> oh no. Yep. You're a little early. Uh, I'm sorry, but we're still getting ready. But I'm so happy you came. You remember our promise? Yes, I remember. You asked us to come to see the show when you gave me this. I'm so happy you came! Please enjoy yourselves! <laughs> you're, Sorry, gonna be, you're, you're gonna I'm be so... like this the entire time, aren't you? Yes. Yes, I am. <laughs> God, I don't, I don't trust a lick 
of whatever. It no. No, damn it. No. Huh. I'm sure my performance will surprise you, Mr. Edgeworth. Oh yeah, you got that right. <laughs> Your performance has already surprised me, Mr. Keys. Ah. Mm. Uh. Um, but he hasn't performed yet. Oh, Regina, please have a look at this photo. Is this balloon the property of the very big circus? Ah, it, it is. Did you see it flying around somewhere? It's highly likely that this balloon was used by the culprit in the case we are investigating. Huh? Who is in charge of the balloon? Well, th that would be Simon, but uh, are you saying? Ah! Mr. Keys, you flew this balloon in the middle of the night, did you not? Uh, I do occasionally practice alone at night. I'm not much of a pilot, though. I'm a, uh, I'm a little clumsy. So for practice, you'll do something as challenging as flying bal a balloon at night? Wouldn't that be rather uh, difficult for someone who is clumsy and not much of a pilot? Then, what do you think I was doing, Mr. Edgeworth? I'll tell you what you was doing. <laughs> Sorry. This is great. You brought Kay to the roof of the Grand Tower. In order to frame her for the murder of Jill Crane. Not a single security camera recorded Kay using the elevator. Therefore, the only way she could have gotten up there was through flight. And the only one who could have flown her up there was you, Mr. Keys. No way! Mr. Edgeworth, how can you say that? Oh my god, he's gonna open his eyes, isn't he? He's gonna be freaky. That's not all. You drugged John at the garbage pickup and kidnapped him. Wasn't that why you were late when you came to watch the trial of Patricia Rowland? No way! I have no idea what you're saying! There's no way I could do things like that! Oh my god, he's dripping with sarcasm. Well, I think that's me through him, but, you know... Well, I, just... it's, I read it like that, too, while you were doing it. I'm like, you oh. son of a... You know what you're doing. <laughs> please believe me, Mr. Edgeworth, please! Please believe me! I wanted to believe you. However, you have broken that trust yourself. That's horrible. Why would you say that? Because you're Did a douche. <laughs> Didn't you once say that you would trust me? That you'd believe in me? Oh, yeah. Oh, we did say that. Oh, because we're birds of a feather, right, Mr. Edgeworth? This was the second case, right? Oh, yep. Oh, oh. Your past, I doubt you have a motive to kill Knightley. Oh, we did say that. Now I think he did kill Knightley. That's son of a. I think you were probably the most affected by his death. Cause he caused it. Sorry. <laughs> I doubt someone is turning into you or working the curse to murder someone. All right, I'll get you out of here. We believe you. Oh. <laughs> oh. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I'm so sad. Those words were all lies. It wasn't a lie. We really did trust you. Kate, even you? You said we were like birds of a feather, and yet... I I'm hurt, Kay. You've hurt me deeply. Oh, cry me a river. I... I... Uh, oh... Hey, Mr. Edgeworth, maybe Simon isn't a bad guy after all. Objection! Don't fall for it, Kay. Ah, I see. So that's how you operate. I understand now, all too well. No matter who you face, you find an emotional weakness and exploit it. You guide each person towards the outcome you desire without them even noticing it. That is how you were able to mastermind the entire case. I may have fallen for your tricks before, but not this time. Simon Keys, I indict you! 
Hmm. So, it's coming to this after all. You son of a You were always so full of confidence, Mr. Edgeworth. But, yeah, I rather like that. Because now, I can rip that confidence to shreds. <gasps> uh, what the hell? Uh, uh, oh, what? Um, excuse me? Uh, oh! <laughs> what? Yeah. What? Yep. <laughs> what? This is, uh, this is Simon <laughs> Keys. What? Did, did he just get a makeover by a monkey? Oh, yeah. He I puts this thing underneath his eye. And what? And, and then, I, think, oh. I think a couple squirrels He's using a cat as, as an armrest. This man um. is something else. <clears throat> I like the music, though. Yeah. That's yeah. really, that's actually kind of fits him. Huh. How <laughs> dare you use Mr. Fluffy's as an armrest? It doesn't look like Mr. Fluffy cares too much. Oh. <clears throat> Good work, everyone. The mastermind behind... Really? Is it really Patricia? You're saying there's someone else who's the mastermind behind the case? Who the hell is it? Dover Sun Knightley is already deceased. In that case, there's one more youth we should consider to be the mastermind. I mean, Dane Gustavus, son. But who the heck is he? Okay. Oh, if I leave Dover's son, then Gustavus' son must be. We're the only friends either of us has since child. Oh, there it is. There's the line. It was so heartbreaking when he said that, too. It was the same as me. We never had real families. It can't be, could it? Could it really be him? That flimsy ass motherfucker! Mr. Edgeworth, what is it? You've gone all pale! Yeah, because I'm human, man. I figured it out. The identity of the mastermind who's been controlling this case from the shadows. What? Who in the world is it? I don't want to believe it myself, but it is someone we know quite well. Sort of well. The mastermind is. Is it really that dude? I want to go back and watch this entire game over again now. Holy crap, man! The mastermind behind this case is that monkey. Oh, wow. Oh my gosh, I think I need to, like... There is no metaphor, you know, I want to say something like, take a cold shower, but that's kind of misleading. Holy mackerel, dude. 5.30 p.m. Very Big Circus Storage Tent. 3, 2, 1, go! Oh man, the music is so... What are you wearing? Man, it feels like we're going into a final boss battle here. Are you ready for this, Frenzy? I'm Stradworth! <laughs> oh, d dude! What is your face wrong? You guys here for the show? Mr. Keys, Miss Barry, I've got a bone to pick with you. 216 of them, actually. Oh, God, you're scary! Okay, even you? You said we were like birds of a feather, and yet now you're more like turds of a butthole. I'm hurt, Kay. You've hurt me deeply. Don't listen to him, Kay. He's, he doesn't know what he's talking about. He's an asshole. Hey, Mr. Edgeworth, maybe Simon isn't a bad guy after all. Don't! Don't fall for that! That's how they do it. That's how they ring you in. And they'll be reeling you in. <laughs> I see, so that's how you operate. I understand now all too well. No matter who you face, you find an emotional weakness and exploit it. You guide each person towards the outcome you desire without them even noticing it. That is how you were able to mastermind the entire case. What? I may have fallen for your tricks before, but not this time. Simon Keys, I indict you! Oh. Hmm. It's too bad you're not a prosecutor now, isn't it? So it's come to this after all. Uh-oh. You were always so full of confidence, Mr. Edgeworth. 
But I rather like that, because now I can rip that confidence to shreds. <gasps> oh, 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 oh. Okay, okay. Holy, what? He's getting the animals to give him a makeover, and he's turned into Kefka. Holy! <laughs> Look at that cat! That cat is like, what is the meaning of my life right now? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> We're not laughing for five minutes here. His personality is completely changed. Well, you didn't see that coming? After all we've been through, Edgeworth. Uh, writing letters in Braille can be a rather enjoyable pastime. In Braille? What? You didn't write jack shit in Braille. The, 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 the chess memo was not- This isn't Braille, you idiot. This, this is very clearly typed up. Like, no- What are you, what are you freaking- Good God. So first this- okay, let, let's, let's review the chain of events. First this- I'm just gonna present this- I'm just gonna present- So, first this idiot is like, Hey, I am- I'm not talking to your- or I'm not talking to Nightly, I don't know who he is. I'm just like, but buddy, we, we already proved that. Now he's like, oh, I wrote my letter- I wrote- I played correspondence just using Braille. It's like, no, you didn't. We have the evidence right here that proves that this wasn't- Good God, you didn't write this in Braille, you freaking idiot. The hurt- you, it was just this typed up- this was- this- this- this thing was typed up. You're making this like how how can how can you be this? Like, the thing is, Dojin clearly isn't incompetent. He's clearly a fairly competent person. So why is he so? I mean, I get that he's blind, right? But he would know that that's just more reason for him to know that this letter isn't Braille. He, he one feel of this thing would immediately be able to figure him out. Or he'd be able to figure it out immediately that it wasn't actually Braille. It was it was it was typed up. So why would he? Why would? Why, that's the thing. Why exactly would Dojin lie about this thing being? Oh. My. God. No. No, there's no way. I'm gonna cheat. I'm cheating. I'm- I'm looking up- I'm- I'm, a, I'm opening up my video from the Imprisoned Turnabout. I- I need to see this. I- I swear I'm going crazy. But I- I need to check this. Well, we're the only friends either of us have had since childhood. He was the same as me. We never had real families. Oh my fucking god! It's Simon! What? Because, but because he was the one who, he was. But Dojin was telling the truth. Dojin was telling the truth the whole time because he was. Simon was the one that was in the prison. That he was. He was the one that was meeting with Knightley. So he. So he could have been the one that was intercepting the letters and he was translating it from Braille to to uh to to to, 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 to something that was typed up. So Dojin was telling the truth. He really did think. He really thought he was playing chess with Simon. He didn't, he didn't realize he was playing chess with Knightley. But why? Wait, but but if that's the case, because Regina, I thought I thought I already proved because in yes, uh, yesterday Regina said that with the crowds that they were they were together the whole time. So no, no, wait, no, she didn't. No, she didn't. Oh, how did I miss that? How the hell did I miss that? Oh my god, that is so smart. Okay, so I can't believe I missed this. That. So, okay, Regina had one line, one single line yesterday, that said something along the lines of, Oh, silly Simon, you get so worn out with, with the crowd so quickly. I didn't pay that at any mind. I didn't notice it even a little bit. But if she, but she said that one line, which means that at some point, she, Simon got quote-unquote upset with the crowds, and he must have split off from her. And if he split off from her to get away from the crowd, then that explains how he would have been able to make the phone call to us because he was the one who kidnapped John. And I didn't even freaking think about it. And you want to know why? It's because I thought the twist was going to be that Ray betrayed us. And I know that sounds really dumb, but, I, but you gotta hear me out on this one. Okay, so, you may have been screaming at me yesterday like, no, but it's obviously Simon. And you were right, it should have obviously been Simon. But it's because of that comment I got in the prison turnabout. Because here's the thing, I said in the disclaimer in episode 5 that I- it could have been anything, and that I, um, that, like, I wasn't spoiled technically because it could have been anything that they were referring to. I still had a pretty good idea that it was gonna be that Ray betrayed us in the end, because it was such a spike. yes, I said a lot, but the big thing, the big thing, um, that I- 
that I said in that video was that what if Ray betrays us at the end? So I'm like, oh, so that's gonna be what it is. Okay, well, I'll keep that in the back of my head, but it, it, I'm not gonna let it bother me. It's whatever. So I was so convinced that that was gonna be the thing that I didn't even pay Simon a second mind, a second mind. I didn't give him a second thought. So when I, so when the the, the thing popped up in my head, I'm like, why is he here? And he was by the, the fireworks. But I was still, I was 100% dead set that he, that he, that Ray was gonna be the one to betray us. To the point where, like, I found an excuse. I looked for a logical justification for him to not be the master because I was so convinced that Ray was going to be the one to betray us. If I had not gotten that comment, I guarantee you I would have spotted him as the mastermind immediately. So that that comment actually saved me from from experiencing this twist earlier. I'm assuming I'm, I could be completely wrong here. Like, I, it, it could still be Ray that betrays us, and Simon could be not be the mastermind at all. But now that I'm thinking about it all in my head, it all makes sense. I, I, like, I'm, I'm, process, I'm trying to, I'm slowly processing all the information, and every loose thread throughout this entire game, I can explain it all. Okay, you ready? Here we go. So, let's take it from the top. We know that Knightley was the other kid in that car, right? So, Knightley locked, uh, Simon in the car. The body double tried to kill Dojin. Roland tried to kill Dojin, and Blaze was the one who pulled the strings behind the scenes to make this all happen, and made Simon's testimony disappear. So... Simon decides, I'm going to knock out all th three of these four birds with one stone. And the way he does that is, I mentioned earlier, Simon was the one that Dojin and Knightley thought they were playing chess with. That's why, that's why Dojin was telling the truth. Like, he, he said, what, I, I don't know who Knightley is, what are you talking about? Because he genuinely thought he was playing chess with Simon. And Knightley probably thought he was playing chess with Simon as well. So he was the middleman between the two. And the reason why is because he was, because if he could establish a, a connection, a chess connection between Dojin and Knightley, then that would lead Roland to suspect that Knightley was the person who uh, was one of Dojin's henchmen. And that's important because Simon was friends with Knightley. So Simon, I'm smiling, my god, this is so smart. I mean, assuming, again, all assuming this is correct, but it all makes so much sense that I'm convinced. So, Simon's friends with Knightley. So he encourages Knightley to say, hey, little friendly pat on the shoulder, elbow, bu elbow bump. Why don't you go try to assassinate the president of Zhang Fei, you know? Casual friendly conversation or casual friendly encouragement from your good old friend Simon Keys over here. So what that does is that, that would have, if, if he was successful, that would have killed two birds with one stone. It would have taken out the president of Zhang Fei and it would have landed Knightley in, uh, in prison. And if that, landed in, if that landed him in prison, then that would have led him right to Roland where she would have had the opportunity to kill him. Then, from behind the scenes, Blaze, I didn't even think about this until now, Blaze is the one who put Sebastian on that case, because he was trying to save Roland. He thought if, that if he removed Edgeworth as the prosecutor and put a complete idiot on the case, then he never would have been able to figure it out. Now, little did he know, we were still able to, to, to solve the case, um, but that was, that was his attempt to fix it. And now, Blaze is all that's left. He's taking care of Roland, he's taking care of Knightley, and, he's t and he almost took care of the body double, but that's a matter for a different time. So, um... Now all he has to do is play is play Jill and Blaze against each other. He 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 communicates anonymously to, to both of them with letters, saying that hey Jill, I know you want Blaze dead. Well, guess what? Blaze is going to be hosting this auction, so why don't you come to this auction and we can t and, and we can deal with him? So Jill wants to kill Blaze, but then Simon kill tells Blaze, hey, Jill wants to kill you. Be ready. So Blaze is prepared ahead of time. He thinks of a he thinks of a scheme. He thinks of a really really complicated plan to kill her and make sure he gets away scot free. But he couldn't get away scot-free, because if he got away scot-free, then he never would have been nailed for the crime, and Simon wouldn't have gotten his revenge. So, Simon had to make sure that, Bla that Blaze's plan would not be able to be seen to, through its to, to fruition. He had to interrupt it. So, it's because if he, so because he needed, he needed Edgeworth to solve the case, and I needed Edgeworth to be involved in the case in the first place. So he kidnaps Kay to, uh, by bringing him to Gore Lake, and then he gets in a hot air balloon, which as a circus performer, Simon would likely have access to. So he takes her up in the hot air balloon, which explains the burner sound effect from Nicole's tape recorder, gets to the top like we deduced earlier today, and he takes the opportunity because he gets to the top and he sees the body double there. And he takes the opportunity to finish off the body double just like we predicted. He lands the hot air balloon directly on top of the on my double. I know what you're going to say, because this contradicts the time of death. Uh, it, it doesn't line up with, with the facts of the case. However, we learned in the inherent, in the inherent turn about that if we freeze the body, it will throw on the time of death. And where was John taken to? He was taken to a cold storage facility. So all Simon had to do was bring the body to the same place that John was found, which would have frozen him and delayed the time of death to line up with the facts of the case. Then all he had to do was plant the body at the film lot in order to frame John for the murder. And as the final nail in the coffin, he Simon kidnaps John so that Roland would be declared guilty, and that would conclude his revenge against every single person involved in the SS5 incident. Oh my god, that is fucking genius!
pure, unbridled genius mystery writing. It was there all along, all the clues, all the evidence, all the little breadcrumb hints along the way. It all makes so much sense. It's... I didn't even think twice about it. I was so convinced that Ray was the one that was going to betray us. And I didn't even think of... I didn't even give Simon a second chance or a second glance. And when I did, I was looking for an explanation as to how he couldn't be the culprit. Because, uh... Because, I, because like I said, I was convinced that it was going to be Ray. So I'm like, okay, well, if I know that's the case, then it can't be him. This freaking game. We, oh my god, this, this game. This game, man. That is... My mind is blown. But it all makes sense now. Everything that's been nagging at my brain the entire time, it all lines up so perfectly. It makes perfect sense. The mastermind behind the case. Simon is the man. Simon Keys is the man who masterminded this game. You're saying that someone else is the master behind this case, and who the hell is it? Dover's son, Knightley, is already deceased. In that case, there is one more youth that we should consider to be the mastermind. You mean Dave Gustavia's son? But who the heck is he? If Knightley is Dover's son, then Gustavia's son must be. God, what voice might I even give you now? Well, we're the only friends either of us have had since childhood. He was the same as me. We never had real families. It can't be. Could it? Could it really be him? Mr. Edgeworth, what is it? You've gone all pale. I figured it out. The identity of the mastermind who's been controlling this case from the shadows. What? Who in the world is it? I don't want to believe it myself. But it is someone who we know quite well. I wouldn't say quite well. The mastermind is Simon Keys. An, an apprentice beast tamer? Heh. <laughs> He's no amateur. So goddamn smart. And I was right too. The freaking monkey manipulating his hair. That's gotta be because he's the mastermind controlling the puppet master pulling the strings behind the scene. Well, the beast yes team is none other than this entire case. Simon Keys, he is the mastermind behind this whole incident. Oh, here we go. Oh my god. We got it all. All the questions have been answered. All the logic has fallen into place. Now all we gotta do is bring it home and corner Simon Keys. You're a little early. I'm sorry, but we're still getting ready to float. We all float down here, Georgie. We have sufficient information about your past. I doubt you had a motive to kill Knightley. Oh, <laughs> that aged like milk. Rather, you are probably the most affected person by his death. Oh, that, that doubly aged like milk. If I doubt someone as timid as you could work up the courage to murder someone. Oh, that's three strikes and you're out, buddy. Alright, I'll get you out of here. We'll, be, we'll believe in you. I'm so sad. Those words were all lies. It wasn't a lie. We really did trust you. Kay, even you, you said we were like birds of a feather. And yet, I'm hurt, Kay. You've hurt me deeply. I, I, oh. Hey, Mr. Edgeworth, maybe Simon isn't a bad guy after all. Come on, Kay. Don't be subdued by his wizardly ways. I see. So that's how you operate. I understand now, all too well. No matter who you face, you find an emotional weakness and exploit it. You guide each person towards the outcome you desire, without them even noticing it. That is how you were able to mastermind this entire case! I may have fallen for your tricks before, but not this time. Simon Keys, I indict you! Even though I am not a prosecutor! Hmm, so, it's come to this after all. Time to float, Georgie. You are always so full of confidence, Mr. Edgeworth. But I rather like that, because now I can rip that confidence to shreds. Mr. I can't tame animals, huh? Did that monkey just salute you? Well, well, well. Look who finally decided to show up. Ha! <laughs> Good work, everyone! <laughs>